Hey, it's Tim with the University of Vinyl. I am back today to talk about new music. At the fear of being branded a nostalgia-drenched YouTube channel, I do still occasionally pick up new music, especially if the bands uh, and the music involved moves me in a particular way. And I can definitely say that both of these bands I've been fans of for a long time so I'm here today to talk about the Red Hot Chili Peppers brand new release, released on, I think, April 1st, earlier in the month, Unlimited Love, and the other album that I'm particularly interested in and high on is uh, the Band of Horses' latest release, their first album in five years, and that is called, in kind of a sarcastic fashion, uh, Things Are Great. So stay tuned. I've got new music, kind of refreshing. I haven't talked about new music in a while, um, but I was compelled to pick up both of these releases, and I'm happy that I did. Let's get started. <laughs> Let's talk about Band of Horses first. Now, Band of Horses at this point in time, the ringleader, the lead singer, uh, rhythm guitarist, uh, occasional keyboard and synth player is Ben Bridwell. Ben Bridwell, the bearded guy with the angelic voice. Uh, this guy kind of uh, has a Neil Young vibe to him as far as that falsetto voice. Uh, that he and Neil share at times. And uh, I love the timber in his voice as well. And Band of Horses, you know, they've been around since, I think, 2006. And uh, they had a couple huge... Their first two albums were, were really big, and they kind of announced themselves on the greater music landscape as a force to be reckoned with. Now... Now, currently, Ben Bridwell, you know, the, him and his band relocated to South Carolina. And Bridwell has gone through some things over the last five or six or seven years. I think he's had a, a, a marital breakup. Um, he has had some interpersonal relationship issues with members of his band. So, you know, I think two of the key band members have departed, the bassist and a rhythm guitarist. They've been replaced. He's got a, a you know a fairly new unit uh, in place, and things are great. Is the new album? I love this cover shot. Just kind of a slice of life there, almost kind of like a suburbia photo, and uh, you know things are great. You can kind of take that, of course, with a grain of salt, um, given everything that everyone has gone through over the last two years. Uh, ben Bridwell definitely has a sarcastic and a dark humor side to him, um, which comes out in the lyrics. Now, if you actually examine some of these lyrics closely, and there is an inner that includes all the lyrics, which I love. Um, yeah, Ben went through some things over the last several years, and uh, he kind of wears his heart on his sleeve. But the lyrics get paired to beautiful music and what you have is a fantastic Band of Horses album. This is uh, the best thing that they've done, I think, in over 10 years. And uh, where to start here? So I have, I think this was a Barnes and Noble exclusive. This is kind of the Midnight Blue version, which is a translucent Kind of darker than teal, I guess, um, with that kind of handsome orange label in the middle. Uh, let me show you the back cover because it's, it's quite funny. Back cover is here. And if you look at the credits, this is on BMG. Uh, you know, they were with Sub Pop for years. But look at the credits here. 2021, Huger Lewis and the Dudes. 
Um, pretty, pretty funny stuff. Pretty sarcastic. And uh, a funny van on the back, which harkens back to the 1970s or 80s. And some of this music definitely does harken back to uh, almost 80s new wave. The first uh, single off this album is called Crutch, which is kind of a play on words. Um, to, you know, you would think he would be talking about, I've got a crush on you, but it's, I've got a crutch on you. And again, you need to look at the lyrics. Um, this guy is a great lyricist, Ben Bridwell. And Crush is an incredible pop song um, with uplifting music, a great melody, and, uh, and a very, very definite vibe. What I'm getting, especially if you listen to that song near the end, there is a rising tide of uh, synths, and it sounds like it could be a Cure song. <laughs> um, so pretty, pretty cool. Now, there are a lot of other standout tracks on this album. And side one, I think, is the stronger side. But on side one, you have... Uh, there's two different kind of pairings of songs that I absolutely love. The first would be the lead-off song, Warning Signs, followed by Crutch. And then later uh, on side one, In the Hard Times, moving into the next song, In Need of Repair. So that is uh, fourth and fifth song on side one. In the Hard Times is an emotional ballad um, with kind of a swelling emotion to it. And it just sounds fantastic. It's a great song. Um, you know, it, it, you know, parts of this album harken back to that huge hit they had, The Funeral. So there's, there's reminiscent sounds and soundscapes involved on this album. But... There's more, there's uplifting uh, music as well, even though some of these lyrics are dark and, and you know, he's talking, you know, kind of tongue in cheek, things are great. Um, but I don't know, I'm, I'm babbling now, but I really, really love this album and I have been spinning this quite a bit. Now, we need to talk about the mastering of this album. I will tell you right now, I, I was not a fan of the mastering. Um, Band of Horses have got a particular sound, almost a wall of sound. There's layered and churning guitars. Everything is drenched in reverb. Uh, there's a lot of echo and effects. And that doesn't spell for great clarity and separation of instruments, unfortunately, on this record. You just have to take it as it is. It is what it is. Um, geez, I wish this album sounded as great as uh, some of the War on Drugs vinyl releases. Now, they are much better, and, and they, they travel a similar soundscape. There's a lot of reverb, there's a lot of pedal work involved um, on the War of Drugs albums, and their albums sound 85% better as far as the mix and the mastering quality is concerned. Uh, than, than this album. I am, uh, I'm putting up with it. I am turning up the volume more. I'm actually putting on headphones and seeing if there's a little more clarity uh, and isolation using headphones. Um, the mastering quality of this album does not blow me away, unfortunately. And, uh, but it is what it is. There's a couple threads online, uh, similar complaints out there. Uh, but I'm not going to let that drag down this fantastic group of songs and kind of a return to form for Band of Horses. So uh, do I wish it sounded better uh, on vinyl? Absolutely. But it is what it is. Uh, there is a little bit of muddiness. There's a little bit of... Uh, there's a lot of compression on this thing, you can tell. Um, apparently mastered by Stephen Marcussen. You know, I've done a mastering... Uh, episode featuring Stephen Marcussen, who mastered a ton of stuff um, with his outfit Precision Lacquer back in the uh, by, back in the 1980s. And there are a lot of great sounding records that he was involved in, but I think the culprit here 
Um, ben Bridwell is co-producer along with uh, a gentleman named Wolfgang Zimmerman. And I think Bridwell likes this kind of wall of sound churning, um, obscured, you know, there's not a lot of clarity, unfortunately, but it is what it is. And, uh, but the, I think, you know, rather than Marcussin, I think he was given the mix down, you know, final mix of the album. He didn't have a whole lot that he could do to, um, you know, kind of add clarity and separation. So, uh, I don't know enough about that, but all in all, this is recommended, especially if you are a Band of Horses fan. This is a great album. There's a lot of emotions involved in this thing. Um, you have on the one end of the spectrum some downbeat lyrics and some kind of idiosyncratic lyrics coupled by an uplifting, swelling, emotional feel to a lot of this music with some fantastic guitar uh, work and layering. And uh, the reverb uh, does work. I just wish, um, you know, I, I just wish there was a little more... Um, you know, shadow and light involved in, in the mix of this album. That is, things are great. Band of Horses, this was released in uh, early March. Uh, they're going on tour this summer with the Black Keys. Um, I'm thinking about maybe trying to catch them uh, at Red Rocks. Next up, the highly anticipated reunion album, uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, of course. It was very, very huge news. Um, they said goodbye to Josh Klinghoffer and said hello again <laughs> to John Frusciante. And uh, Fru Frusciante, Frusciante. John Frusciante, man, you, you just kind of, um, first of all, He's put out some amazing solo albums that are entirely impossible to get your hands on. But if you think about Californication, Blood, Sugar, Sex, Magic, uh, By the Way, Stadium Arcadium, these are some of the biggest Red Hot Chili Peppers featuring some of the most incredible soundscapes uh, that they've ever put out. And um, it was really exciting to hear that he was he was rejoining the band, and you know one would could only kind of imagine what was going to happen. And what happened is a very 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 expansive uh, album called Unlimited Love. This is the limited edition gatefold, um, which is a fantastic package. Nice. Nice package, very glossy um, cover. Fantastic photography on that gatefold. There is a poster of the band included in this package, which I have not bothered to open up yet. Um, why didn't we get poly sleeves? That's my only complaint. We have kind of a paper uh, inner sleeves for the two albums. Now, the fact that this is spread across two albums is fantastic, and it was a necessity with, I think, I think there's 17 songs on this thing. Um, but I just ran out of uh, my anti stanic uh, rice paper inner sleeve, so uh, those will be swapped out um, soon when I get more inner sleeves. The uh, album is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful black and love that Warner Records label. The other important thing to talk about here is, and this has been kind of widely reported, Flea has done some interviews, uh, Anthony uh, Kiedis has done, the whole band did an interview actually separately with Rick Rubin on his 
Broken Record podcast, which is highly recommended. Um, this thing was recorded to analog tape, and it was uh, mastered and cut by none other than Bernie Grundman. Listening to this album is like night and day compared to the Band of Horses pressing that I have. There is just incredible clarity, separation of instruments. The soundstage is amazing. And uh, yeah, this is, this is Bernie Grunman at his finest. This is a, a, an amazing recording. The highlights on this album... First of all, this is a total band effort. You know, uh, on Stadium Arcadium, and by the way, Frushante really kind of threw his weight around, and he was kind of the, well, I think the band, I think he's a catalyst for the creativity, and he, he is a lot of the drive involved in Red Hot Chili Peppers on their better releases, in my opinion. Uh, but with this album... He is more of a, a total band player. Um, he's not to the forefront and, you know, reeling off incredible solos on every song. He is contributing uh, to the overall makeup of, of, of many of these songs. That's not to say that he has his moments, which I love, um, but this is a total band effort. Chad Smith's drumming here is off the charts amazing. Um, Everything from subtle textures and brushwork to Keith Moon style freakouts, <laughs> uh, he is a force of nature. Um, Flea has never sounded better. He is in the pocket with Smith at all times. Anthony Kiedis, his voice has not changed. <laughs> uh, he has a great emotional. Uh, his lyrics are, are singular Anthony Kiedis lyrics. He can kind of freeform um, and improvise when needed, which apparently is what he did in these recording sessions. Uh, there's another, there's an hour interview on YouTube uh, by uh, the, the Apple Music guy, Zane, Zane Lowe, um, sitting down with uh, Anthony Kiedis. It looks like they're in Malibu outside at a picnic table. It's a really good interview. Um, but yeah, Kiedis' lyrics uh, and his just vocal delivery here is, is just fantastic. There is a ton of variety in these songs, which uh, always is kind of a great, it makes for a great Chili Peppers album. Right off the bat, the first track is called Black Summer. Um, you can go find this. They did this live on um, either Kimmel or Jimmy Fallon's show recently. And this includes a incredible John Fruscante solo, uh, definitely Hendrixian <laughs> in tone and in style. And it's just off the charts gorgeous. The, the tone that he has on some of these solos is just unbelievable. But he also uses, I think, several different, you know, he's known for two or three uh, vintage strats that he owns and uses all the time. But he, I think, used either a Jazz Master or maybe it was a Jaguar on one song that is kind of drenched in, in surf rock. That song is on side D, uh, Wet Braids and Pillow Chair. Great, great, great song and listen for that surf rock guitar, especially near the end, it's incredible. There is one of my favorite songs on the album, it's called Not The One. This is a slow tempoed, kind of a slow, slow tempoed, slow burner by the band. Uh, Kiedis has got great, great, great vocal delivery here. There is a soulful interplay with, with Flea and John's uh, guitar playing as well. Um, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's reminiscent of Under the Bridge. You, you can, you can kind of pick that vibe up. Um, and speaking of vibe, uh, <laughs> these guys are not afraid to, to roll out the funk that they're famous for as well. There's two or three songs. Uh, the one standout that I'm thinking about is, uh, Aquatic Mouth Dance, which is on side A. And this could have come off freaky styly. It's got that throwback funk 
Chili Peppers vibe to it. It's a fantastic song. There is another song uh, called Poster Child, and Kiedis name checks everybody from Robert Plant to the Thompson Twins uh, to Parliament in the song. It, it's a cool, uh, well, it's kind of a stream of consciousness song. Um, you know, Kiedis is doing a quick scat vocal to it. I've listened to this album three times now. Um, I've only had, I've had this thing for less than a week. Um, I'm picking up and hearing new things with every listen. Um, I can't get over the recording quality. I mean, it's just, this is just a fantastic mastering job, a fantastic recording job. Um, by the band, uh, produced by Rick Rubin. You know, Rick Rubin is known to kind of get out of the way. Uh, he, he's a kind of naturalistic uh, producer, so doesn't have, you know, a signature sound or anything like that. He lets um, he lets the artist, you know, work and um, tries to elevate, you know, the best that, that they can be with the art that they're working on at the time. So... Um, don't think I have anything else to say today. Um, you know, I might talk about this again, but this is, um, one of the more exciting releases, uh, you know, in the last year for me and love this, uh, love this package, love the music, love the fact that John Frusciante is back in the band. Uh, they're coming to Denver. You know, this is shaping up to be, it could be a busy concert season for my wife and I. We've got tickets to various, various things. Uh, need to start looking at the budget because I checked on tickets on this thing, or for these guys, uh, very, very, very scary prices uh, online. Um, so I don't know if we're going to make it to this or not, but I am very, very pleased to have this. One gripe I do have, I ordered this thing from Acoustic Sounds and um, I was, you know, release date, drop street date, I think was April 1st, Friday, April 1st, and it took over a week for this thing to come, um, which, you know, kind of bummed me out. But hey, shipping, postal delays, it is what it is. It's 2022, right? That is, uh, that is how it is. This was... My review for Unlimited Love by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, their 2022 incredible release. Hey everybody, thank you very much for watching today. These, both of these albums are highly, highly, highly recommended. The music on both is incredible. Um, this is the better, this is the better, um, production as far as the mastering and the sound quality is concerned. But like I talked about earlier, I can't not listen to these songs despite what I feel is a missed opportunity to add a little more clarity into this mix. Um, this is uh, a great, great, great collection of songs. A huge return to form, I think, for Ben Bridwell and Band of Horses. Thanks for watching, everybody. I will be back soon. Hope everyone enjoys their weekend. And please, if you liked this video, just click the like button. Um, if you've got either of these albums, I would love to have a little interaction uh, in the comment uh, section. So feel free to drop a comment. Most importantly, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. If you like what I'm doing, it helps grow the channel, spread the word. And uh, thank you very much.